As I mentioned in a previous video, there's nothing like a circle for bringing about a feeling of togetherness. The circle allows participants to see and hear everyone else. When everyone moves or sings in synchronization, the feeling of belonging is enhanced, even for the child who may be shy or who may be uncomfortable in other group activities. Each individual in a circle is significant. Additionally, recognition of others and both verbal and nonverbal communication are among the social skills fostered in the round. Of course, creating a sense of community is vital to avoiding behavior challenges. To remain part of the circle, children must accept the rules and roles assigned. Also, if we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, an individual's primary need is for safety. The second is love and belonging. These two needs are especially essential to young children. Because the circle games here involve all of the children participating, no one is ever eliminated, Circles meet both of those needs, and once those needs have been met, there's far less cause for acting out. It's important to note, however, that circle times during which the children are required to sit in a certain position and simply listen will not necessarily enhance a sense of community. It is active participation by all while in a circle formation that most contributes to this. So, with all of that in mind, here are some more circle games for you and the children. Let's start with activities that help children learn one another's names. In the name game, you sit in a circle with the children and clap the syllables of each child's first name while saying the name out loud. For example, Samuel would have three claps, Samuel. After clapping each name, invite the group to mimic you. For chanting names, you sit in a circle with the children and begin to slowly beat your hands or rhythm sticks on the floor, asking the children to join in. Starting with your own name, go around the circle chanting everyone's names name four times, fitting the name to the rhythm of the beating. Once the children have mastered this, you can later pick up the tempo, chanting each name only twice. It would look something like this. Ray, Pika, Ray, Pika, Ray, Pika, Ray, Pika. Here's a game called Say It, Sing It. Sit with the children in a circle. Starting with the child on one side of you, say his or her first name. Repeat that with everyone joining in. Next, sing that child's first name. The rest of the group then does the same. Follow this by whispering the child's name. The final step is to simply mouth the child's game with no sound. The children love this. If you'd like, you can add shouting the child's name to the mix. Have you ever played Bug in the Rug? This game is great for helping the children get to know one another better. You'll need a sheet or a parachute to play it. The children sit on the floor around the sheet, spaced so that they're not touching one another. All of the children close their eyes while you choose one to leave the circle and hide under the sheet. When the children open their eyes, they have to guess who's the bug in the rug. To help the children become more familiar with one another, after identifying the bug in the rug, the other children have to tell you one thing about her or him. I'm a big believer in the importance of touch, especially for children. A game called Make It Rain gives children a reason to touch one another. The children stand in a circle, one behind another, each placing their hands lightly on the shoulders of the child in front of him or her. When you tell the children that the rain has begun to fall softly, the children patter their fingertips very gently on the shoulders of the person in front, while simultaneously tiptoeing around in the circle. Eventually explain that the rain is beginning to fall a bit harder, which means their movements should become a tiny bit more forceful. You can continue this process until there is a thunderstorm, but be sure the children use their fingertips only and not their hands. Another game involving touch is It's Electric. Explain to the children that electricity is energy that flows through a wire. Then stand in a circle with the children with everyone holding hands. Squeeze the hand of the child next to you, explaining that the squeeze represents electricity flowing from one to another. Have the children next to you, or the child next to you, squeeze the hand of the next child, and so forth, all the way around the circle. When the electricity reaches you again, say, it's electric. Repeat this activity several times, letting the children take turns starting and ending the process. When they're comfortable with the game, invite them to add an electrical sound sound effect like zzzt and a little vibration to their bodies as they squeeze the hand of the next child. 
Thanks again for watching. All of these games are excerpted from my new book about avoiding behavior challenges. It's coming from Red Leaf Press in the fall of 2019. I hope you'll watch for it and I hope that you will like and subscribe to this channel. In the meantime, if you want to get the PDF that includes this script and these slides along with bonus materials, go to raypika.com and hover your mouse over media on the top banner. I'll see you next time.